When we hold on to grievance and pain from the past, we keep ourselves from being able to really move into our fullest expression of self. We need to practice forgiveness from the soul recovery perspective, dissipating the energy and releasing the past for good. If you're interested in this profound transformation, I invite you to join me in Colorado the weekend of June 8th and 9th to have an incredible experience with others on this same soul recovery journey. Two full days of immersion in the soul recovery process where you will indeed leave transformed. You will be able to truly let go of these old pains and step into a new way of being. Check out the show notes for a coupon code and how to register. After recently pulling an oracle card from a deck that read, I will not attempt to control other people's experiences. I just thought that was so perfect in our soul recovery journey. This desire that we have to try to be helpful, to try to make other people's experiences be easier for them or be different. And how this is such a foundational part of our learning to let go of other people's experiences, concentrate on how we are participating within them, turning the attention to ourself, working on our spiritual path, our spiritual journey, and letting them have their own experience just as it is. Enjoy the episode. Welcome to the Recover Your Soul podcast, a spiritual path to a happy and healthy life. My name is Reverend Rachel Harrison. I started Recover Your Soul after having profound changes in my life from my recovery of alcoholism, codependency, and control addiction. I was guided to share the tools and principles of spirituality and soul recovery to help others transform their lives as mine was transformed. For us to overcome external circumstances, we need to turn the attention to ourselves, focusing on our inner change and healing. Positive results in our lives will follow. Welcome to Recover Your Soul. I'm Rev. Rachel, and I am so happy that you're here today. Maybe you're here for the first time, or maybe you've just listened to a few episodes and you're just getting started. Welcome to the community. This is a community. We are here learning and growing and supporting each other. And it means so much to me that people know that I see this as us holding space for each other, that we're all on this path of figuring out how to be okay, even when the people around us or the circumstances around us are complex or dysfunctional or hard. And when we look at the knowing that we get to choose within ourselves. We get to take our power back and start to realize we don't have control of anything outside of us, but that we can indeed make choices around how we choose to see it, how we choose to feel about it, how we choose to respond to it. We can be happy and healthy and free, even in the midst of a pretty complex world and complex relationships. So welcome to the community. Thank you for being here to listen. For today's episode, I wanted to talk about an oracle card that I pulled when my son Bodhi recently came for a visit. And I have an Abraham Hicks deck, you know that I love Abraham Hicks, and I got to see them in person and see Esther as she was able to be a translator to this cosmic consciousness, whatever you want to call it. Again, the spiritual path is yours, whatever it is for you. I'm not here to tell you what your spirituality should be, but that spirituality is important. So I got to see Abraham Esther Hicks channeling Abraham a couple months ago, maybe in Denver, Colorado, and they were selling their Oracle card decks and I bought a whole bunch of Oracle card decks. And so I generally have some sort of Oracle card deck out on the table in my living room. And I find them to be a really profound way for us to touch into ourselves for me to need, maybe I need a little reflection or I need to ask a question and make sure that I'm on the right track or to get some validation on something And I find that it's a way for me to tune into my higher self. You can do this with books as well. If you have a stack of spiritual or self-development books that you love and have meant something to you to just have them in a pile 
And when you're feeling doubt or you want an answer to something, or you, you're asking, how do I connect to higher power to be able to have more clarity about what's going on and what answers I might need? Sometimes I'll just pull out a book and I'll just open it up and start reading and seeing what guidance is being offered. Now, we use Oracle decks in the Sacred Circle that we have here in Colorado once a month. We used Oracle decks in the retreat, the transformational retreat that we had in Colorado as well in August, where amazing, amazing women came together to connect over, change your story, change your life. And we used Oracle decks in that setting too. It's not something that is um, woo-woo in the sense of coming from the outside. It's really you speaking to yourself. It's really a way for us to connect to our higher self, to that part of us that is connected to something even greater still. And when I pull these decks or I pull cards, what I'm really looking for is to not have an answer from outside, but an answer from inside. That knowing that we all have already that intuitive knowing that we have and how to have more clarity around it. I remember when I came back into the rooms and started my 12 steps again, this time, five and a half years ago, and I got a new sponsor that was a woman that the church I attended and she was doing a prayer to get us started in our meeting. And she was the first one who used the words in the prayer, allow the guidance to be clear. That was so poignant for me because I hadn't ever asked for the guidance to be clear and easy to understand. And when I started using those words, I found that the guidance, the intuition started coming more clearly and easy to understand because I was specifically asking. And in all the spiritual teachings and in the New Testament, it talks about ask and you shall receive. So I often use in my meditation prayers, in my setting intention prayers to use the words, I am asking, and in asking I shall receive. And these requests for clarity, for guidance, for it to be easy, for our way to be made easy, that we are opening and asking, really do allow things to come more easily and open to us, right? So here I am with this Oracle deck, and Bodhi's in town, and It's fun for us all to sit down together and share and connect. And so I pull out this Abraham Hicks Oracle deck and spread it out and everybody picks a card. And I can't remember what Rich and Bodhi picked, but I do know that it was really aligned with them, that they got what was aligned with them. And that was really cool. And then I got one that just made me laugh so hard because this is soul recovery. This is my journey. This is what I'm working on. And it said, I will not attempt to control others' experiences. Now, this is my life's work that I have this part of me that feels like it's my job or my desire or my responsibility to control others' experiences, to help make them easier for them, to make it better for them. And in this continued ask that I have of these resources, opening a book, and seeing maybe what those words are that meant something to you. If you have a bunch of books that you love to just open the book, just like the Oracle cards and read what it says. This was so clear. I will not attempt to control others experiences. And then on the back of the card, it says, rather than trying to control the experiences of all others, which you cannot do no matter how hard you try. Instead, Intend to control your own participation within those experiences. And by setting forth your clear image of the life you want to live, you will be guided in every moment towards a smooth and pleasant path for yourself. And I thought it was so beautiful because this is indeed where my healing has come. This is indeed what has happened to me that. I was expending so much time and energy on the outside trying to fix and change and do something about and thinking I knew better for or what should happen for them or saving them from pain or saving them from a crash or 
whatever it was, looking about how I could fix it, that I wasn't attending to my own participation. And in my own participation, sometimes I wasn't doing such a great job. Sometimes I was showing up in panic or in anxiety or in fear, and I wasn't actually being my grounded, whole, centered self. Now, as I'm saying this, the memories that are coming back to me around where this came from in me, this part of me that has learned how to be a codependent, to be a people pleaser, that I believe that my addiction to alcohol really resonated around trying to figure out how to tamper down this real discomfort that I felt in other people's uncomfortable feelings. So much of what we do when we're adults comes from what we learned as children, what our situations were as kids, that we're either learning from those patterns, we're being given belief systems, or that we're in reaction to protecting ourselves from some sort of pain that we have, or that we get rewarded for some type of behavior and we start to really identify with those behaviors and we start to really lean into what those are. So this controlling other people's experiences came from the fact that from a very early age, I got a lot of praise for being good. I remember situations in my life where it felt like I was actually helping the situation by how I showed up in it. And I was making things different for the people around me by the choices that I made, whether it was fixing something or taking care of something. I'm coming back to this memory of my mom and my stepdad going to Europe. And I was in college by then. So they're in Europe. They're in some, I think they're in Turkey. And my mom calls. And of course, this is way back before there were cell phones or, you know, whatever it was. So it was a big deal that she was calling me from Turkey. And she called to say that they had been in a subway and that the doors had opened. And in the time the doors opened, there was all this commotion. And a woman with a baby bumped into my stepdad and dropped her keys. And so he bent over to help her pick up her keys. And then right before handed her the keys and then right before the doors closed, they popped back out. And then he realized he had been pickpocketed. That was them working together that this this ruse of the person with the baby and the keys, somebody else was behind them that pulled his wallet out of his pocket. And she was calling me to say, I'm not entirely sure what to do about it. Now, my mom's an incredibly intelligent person. She has a PhD in chemistry. She's a scientist. She is incredibly independent. She knows how to take care of herself. She is far from helpless. But it was this pattern that we had that I was good at fixing things. I would know what to do. I would be able to figure out quickly how we could remedy this situation. And on some level, it's really beautiful that she's calling me. Like, how good do I feel that she's calling me from overseas saying, you know, what do you think we should do about this? And, you know, I'm saying, okay, well, let's call American Express or, you know, what the credit card numbers are. And did you have your, this is when we had traveler's checks, right? Can you go to the traveler's checks office and get those replaced and have the other ones canceled? You know, whatever the situation was, But it filled me up knowing that I could fix things. So once you get a hit, a dopamine hit of something that feels good, then you want to do more of that. You want to do more of what is showing your ego structure, your identification of yourself. Oh, this is who I am. I'm good at fixing things. I prided myself on being able to take care of things. And again, these personality traits that we have are not to be diminished. This isn't about saying, oh, you shouldn't have had those action steps. What we're learning in soul recovery is we're starting to learn where we got these belief systems and how we're using them in our life and whether we're using them from the healthiest perspective or whether we're using them from what I call under the line into these gray and sometimes dark places 
that move into codependence, that move into losing ourselves and thinking that the outside world needs to be a certain way or our job is to take care of others in a certain way for us to be okay. And when I look at this way that my life panned out for me that set up these systems for me, of course, this is how this worked. Of course, it set up these systems as an only child and being in this dynamic of a family of parents who were separated when I was seven. And even with my dad, to be able to go to my dad's house and be able to take care of myself starting at seven and eight years old and be independent and be praised for that independence built up this part of myself that said, I know how to do things. I'm good at this. Well, some of these are my greatest personality traits, and I'm so grateful for them. But when I look at this card that says, I will not attempt to control others' experiences. Instead, I will control my own participation in those experiences. It is so fascinating how when we just change the perception and the perspective just a little bit and start taking a step back and allowing ourselves to have space to see what other people's experiences are, and some of them are hard, and some of them are really difficult, and sometimes you're watching them as if there is a crash about to happen in their life. And you want to do everything that you can to stop that crash from happening. If you're ready for soul recovery, as a spiritual coach, I can support your healing to help make real changes that will bring you a life of peace, happiness, connection, and abundance. You can also work in smaller groups by taking a deep dive in a Zoom workshop or with me in person at a retreat or an event. Join others on the soul recovery path once a month for the free Zoom support group or daily on the private Facebook page. Visit the website recoveryoursoul.net to book coaching sessions with me or find all the information you need about soul recovery, dates that are coming up, and how to register for those groups and workshops. To support the podcast and the community, check the links in the show notes to make a small monthly donation or a one-time donation of your choice that will make a huge impact to support this community and the soul recovery mission. Together, we can do the work that will recover your soul. But when we come to this place in soul recovery where we say, I will not attempt to control other people's experiences, we start looking from a larger perspective where we start to say, what is this person's soul's journey? What is it that their curriculum of life is for them? What choices and beliefs have they had up until this situation that have gotten them into this place where they are. And if I'm trying to control and do this part of me that knows that I'm good at fixing things, is quote unquote fixing them actually beneficial or helpful to them? Are they asking for the fixing? Do they think they need fixing? Do they want the help? Am I able to come and speak to them and communicate and participate? in what's going on for them in a way that they can hear, that is healthy, that is constructive, that is kind? Will I come in in my flurry of wanting it to be different and say things in a way that will make it so that they're defensive or it shuts them down or it makes them run to their way of soothing themselves, maybe their addiction even harder because it just flames their shame? Those are the parts of us that start to say, is my attempting to control their experience actually making that experience worse? Or is their experience just what it's supposed to be? So our participation in how we see it can allow us to turn the attention to ourself and start to look at those parts of ourself that says, why do I want to fix it? Why is this hurtful to me? What's going on here that I want to make different? And what is it in me 
that I'm really protecting? What is it in me that I want to see it be different? Can I sit in the discomfort? Can I own my own feelings? Do I even know how I feel? I was talking to one of my son's friends today, and we were talking about how sometimes it's easier to put all the attention on somebody else than it is to put the attention on ourselves and what's going on for us, that fixing or helping somebody else that we love seems like where we want to put our energy. But when we do that, we're actually diminishing our own power in our own lives. The truth is we only have so much energy to expend. Bandwidth is a way that we can say it now that that's a term that's used for how data is processed. There's only so much bandwidth. And if you have a certain amount of energy and you're expending that energy elsewhere to where you actually are powerless, you don't have control. And step one of soul recovery is we're powerless over every single thing outside of ourselves and our desire to control people, places, and things is causing us pain and suffering. If we don't have control of anything outside of ourselves, but that's where we're putting our energy in our attempt to control other people's experiences, we're actually giving them our power. We're giving away the one place that we have some control in ourselves. So the second part of this says, setting forth a clear image of the life you want to live. You know, most people when asked what they want, they'll say they want to be happy. They just want to be happy. And then you ask them, what does happiness look like? And the Interesting thing is that we don't have a clear image of what that looks like. Sometimes we choose a lot of outside stuff. We choose, I want to have more money, or I want a bigger house, or I want a different job. We're looking at outside circumstances and asking those to fill us up. But if you start looking at the importance of having a clear image of the life you want to live, generally, when you start looking at what is happiness, then you're looking at how you feel on the inside. Happiness for me has become feeling comfortable with myself, being in my own skin and loving who I am, feeling at ease, having contentment, having a joy for living, feeling peaceful, feeling healthy, and wanting to learn and grow and have deeper connections with my family and my friends, wanting to feel like I'm being of service, wanting to wake up every morning being happy to be alive. These are feelings. These are experiences within instead of saying, I want material stuff on the outside. And when you start having this clear image, the universe is asking you, the same way that we ask in the prayer for clarity, we need to give clarity to the universe so that we can get what we're asking for. You get what you're asking for. And generally what we're asking for is a lot of negative stuff because we're expending so much of this limited energy on what we don't like, what isn't working for us what other people should be doing, why we're not happy, why they're doing something that irritates us, why we wish people were different, why we wish our job was different. And all of that is actually bringing more of that to you. And you're not giving the universe a clear image of the life you want to live. So when we take the attention off of everybody on the outside and making their experiences different. And we start saying, how am I going to show up? How am I going to participate? What is the life that I want to live? How do I actually come into my day every day and see I am healthy, I am well, I am vibrant, I am full, I'm excited, I'm passionate about what I'm doing. I love the people I work with. I love my family. I accept the world as it is. I see it for what it is, and I am releasing my need to attempt how the experiences are for everybody else. And I turn the attention to myself, and I notice how I need attention. What are the parts of me that are sad? What are the parts of me that need something to be mm, more fulfilling? 
How do I get fulfilled for myself in that instead of looking at other people to have that fulfillment? What is the life that I want to live? Do I take claim over what that is? And am I ready to see that clearly and begin to take action steps for it by listening to the guidance? It says you will be guided in every moment towards a smooth and pleasant path for yourself. It doesn't feel like that when we're in the midst of chaos. But the more that we start doing this work of releasing the people around us, releasing the circumstances around us, accepting people and things for what they are, turning the attention inward, noticing if we let go, what is our feelings? What is our belief systems to unravel? What do we need to change in how we see it, what our perception is, so that we can have clarity of the life that we want? We can start moving towards the life that we want, start moving towards healthier relationships, start moving towards a career that is going to fill you up, start moving towards abundance, moving towards health, moving towards joy, having gratitude in your life. Changing what you put your energy into, your thoughts are so powerful. And letting go of the need to attempt to change other people's experiences. So I know that the universe will continue to speak to me. And I am grateful for this clear guidance that I ask for. And I am asking, and in asking, I am receiving. And I continue to just be so amazed at how I lived in such anxiety. I was at a level eight to 10 anxiety on a daily basis. I was on medication. I was medicating myself with drugs and alcohol. I was in a place where my bandwidth was expended on seeing what wasn't working and how I wanted others and situations to be different and trying to control everything around me to be helpful so that it could calm down. So if they could calm down, I could be better. And now I look at these last five and a half years of accepting things and people and circumstances for exactly what they are. Looking at myself, what is my participation in myself? Noticing when I get rehooked, being kind to myself when I get rehooked, looking deeper into me and what my fears are, bringing light into my own subconscious, listening to my inner guidance, doing my spiritual practice, talking to people who can help me through and help me see it in a new way and not stay in my old thinking that's complaining and wishing everything was different and loving myself and my anxiety level on a daily basis. I'm going to say it's a one. It hasn't completely gone away. Sometimes I feather up to a four and then I ask myself, Ooh, what's going on? How can you take care of yourself? But I am no longer this ball of stress energy that I used to be that was attempting to control everything and everyone's external circumstances. Thank you for being on this journey with me again and listening to this episode. I hope it provided you with some tools, some spiritual practice tools in your soul recovery journey. I'm always here to help. If you would like support on doing the nine steps of soul recovery and looking at those under beliefs, those patterns, and how to truly let go of the people and circumstances around you, book a coaching session with me and we can get started together. Until next time, namaste. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Recovery Soul Podcast and being part of this amazing and growing community. If you loved this episode and you want even more, there is a bonus episode with even more content every Friday. This is by subscription. You can access that by being a Patreon member and there's three tiers of giving of your choice or an Apple Podcast subscriber. 
Once you have subscribed, you have access to a whole back catalog of episodes as well. If you will go to the website, recoveryoursoul.net, and I would love for you to subscribe to email updates so that you can keep posted with everything that's going on, different events, what dates are coming up, any reminders. There's only a couple emails each month. I hope you follow Recover Your Soul on social media. You can find us on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, the private Facebook community page. TikTok. And if you want guided meditations, look for Reverend Rachel Harrison on Insight Timer. I really encourage you to take advantage of the one-on-one coaching. This is a unique, intuitive connection between the two of us. There are nine steps to soul recovery, and I do use those nine steps to loosely guide us through whatever your coaching that you need. But really, it's about creating a way for you to feel comfortable around your healing of your past, looking at the situations in your life, what are the patterns, what are the beliefs that are holding you back, breaking free from those patterns, breaking free from those beliefs, letting go of control, letting go of the people around you, and taking your power back discovering who you are and who you want to be in the world and how I can support you to do this. And also you're sharing this podcast with your friends, putting five stars, leaving reviews, really sharing this with others is growing the community. Thank you for being part of this community. Thank you for supporting Recover Your Soul. And I know that together we can do the work that will recover your soul. The Recover Your Soul podcast and its content is for educational purposes only and is not allied or representative of any organizations or religions. It's based on the opinions and experience of Reverend Rachel Harrison. Recover Your Soul claims no responsibility to any persons or entity for any liability, loss, damage, or cause alleged to be caused directly or indirectly as a result of its use. Applications or interpretations of the information represented herein. Take what you need and leave the rest.